from MTN News. This is the race for U.S. Senate. Welcome to today's U.S. Senate debate here on the Montana Television Network. Yes, our focus today is Montana's 2020 U.S. Senate race, one of the most closely watched in the entire country, and it looks to be on track to become the most expensive political race in Montana history. The general election, of course, is coming up November 3rd. If you're keeping track at home, that is just 24 days away. The ballots were mailed out on Friday of this week, so voters be looking for those ballots to be arriving soon in a mailbox near you. Those ballots, of course, need to be returned to your local election office by 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. on Election Day. Of course, at stake in this race is one of Montana's two U.S. Senate seats. The salary of a U.S. Senator is currently at $174,000 per year. Now it's time to meet the candidates. Governor Steve Bullock was born in Missoula, grew up in Helena, and earned his law degree from Columbia University in New York City. Earlier in his career, he worked in private practice as an attorney and as an assistant attorney general for the state of Montana. He won election as Montana's attorney general in 2008 and then as governor in 2012 and 2016. Bullock, a Democrat, says as governor, he has worked with both Democrats and Republicans to expand affordable health care, strengthen Montana's economy, and invest in public schools. He and his wife, Lisa, have three children. U.S. Senator Steve Daines grew up in Bozeman and has a chemical engineering degree from Montana State University. He had a 28-year career in the private sector before he was elected to Congress, including a dozen years as an executive at Right Now Technologies, the Bozeman software development firm that created more than 500 high-paying Montana jobs. He was elected in 2012 as Montana's only U.S. House representative and won election to the Senate in 2014. He says he's been recognized as one of the most effective and bipartisan members of Congress. Steve and his wife, Cindy, have four children and one grandchild. As we get started today, a quick summary of the rules. The uh, first candidate being questioned will get 60 seconds to respond. The second candidate will then have a 30 second rebuttal and the first candidate then will have a 30 second response time. We're asking the candidates, of course, to stay within the constraints of our time. That way we can get in as many questions as possible. We have our MTN debate team with us today. Let's meet Jill Valley, anchor reporter at KPAX TV in Missoula. Mike Dennison, chief political reporter with the Montana Television Network. I'm Jay Cohn, anchor emeritus at KTVQ in Billings. And I have the first question. We had a, dry, a drawing prior to our debate. And uh, Senator Daines, the honor of getting the first question goes to you. And here we go, Senator Daines. Our first topic today is the pandemic. The coronavirus continues to surge across the country here in Montana again today, more than 170 new cases. But the country is still waiting for yet another COVID relief bill. The president has been uh, inconsistent to say the least as to what he might accept in that bill. Our question to you, Senator, is, uh, what would you accept in another coronavirus relief bill? And will we get this done soon? Will you get this done? No. Well, thanks. Uh, it's the numbers that we've just seen today are staggering. So 721 new active cases. We just got ranked the third highest COVID infection rate on a per capita basis in the country. We've had 209 Montanans have tragically lost their lives. First and foremost, we need to focus on those who are most vulnerable. Those are our senior citizens, those with compromised immune systems, and those in Indian country. We're seeing the uh, death rate with COVID in Indian country five times that greater than the general population across Montana. I wanna see another package. Both sides are working to get another package done like we did back in March, the 96 to zero vote. The challenge we have right now is Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer wanna put $400 billion in there to bail out states like New York, California, and Illinois that had fiscal problems before, I don't wanna see Montana taxpayers footing the bill for these liberal states. But here's a real problem I'm seeing right now. Out in Indian country, we've seen that the, the Governor Bullock's team has allocated dollars, more dollars to a Missoula condo project than all the tribes in Montana combined. Thank you, we Senator Daines. We need more Daines. resources to our tribes. Governor Bullock, you have uh, 30 seconds. You know, we do need another CARES package. Unfortunately, Washington DC and Steve Daines has dropped the ball. 
We put out with our CARES dollars over 31 different relief programs, committed 97% of the money and $700 million is out the door. But the challenge really does become at the end of the day, I mean, no, it's Indian country. Look, Steve Baines didn't even want to provide the $25 million per tribe in the first CARES Act. Right now on the ground, we're actually working with all our tribal nations. I know that we have National Guard and others, and we'll continue to do what's necessary, but we do need Washington to get basically Thank back you, together, quit pointing fingers, because Montanans expect more than that. Senator Dane, you have a 30 second response. Governor Bullock just lied in that response. I got 25, I got $8 billion in the Cobra Leap package in March. He needs to go out and talk to the tribes. I was on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation yesterday. I was with the Crow tribe leadership yesterday. They are appalled by the fact that Governor Bullock and his team, in fact, it was folks who donated to his campaign primarily, took the $1.25 billion that we sent to Montana back in April. They've given more money to a Missoula condo project than all of the tribes combined. And that was supposed to be dollars sent to tribes in our local communities. All right, thank you. My next question goes to Mr. Bullock. You issued shutdown orders in Montana this spring when we had far fewer cases. And as we saw today, 721 new ones in Montana. How come no drastic action now when it seems like Montana is suddenly a hot spot? And do you feel like you're managing this crisis effectively? Yeah, the numbers are really concerning from my perspective. Um, and, you know, we're not only seeing spikes in Montana, but really all across the country. And I think the reason why governors and others aren't rolling back things are twofold. One of which is that, look, if we shut down parts of our economy right now with, I mean, Senator Dames took, I think, seven weeks vacation this summer while we were trying to get money to our small businesses. Uh, we helped out over 10,000. But if we shut them down right now, both workers and businesses would have nothing along the way because DC will only point fingers and can't get its act together. And second of which, you know, we've got to learn, when I said when we re we're gonna start reopening, we have to learn how to live with this virus. Meaning that we know the steps that we have to take. We need to be wearing masks. We need to be taking social distancing. We need to be disinfecting. And if we do that, we will get our hands around this again. And I do have faith in Montanans. All right, thank you, Mr. Bullock. Mr. Daines, 30 seconds. I strongly disagree. The governor said we need to learn to how to live alongside this pandemic. That's, I, I reject that. We need to focus on the most vulnerable. We need to focus on those in Indian country. The way out of this is gonna be through these therapeutic drugs and a vaccine. Think about polio, smallpox, measles. We have faced pandemics in the past. It is, is a path of the vaccine will end it. So I reject the notion we have to learn how to live with it. We need to end it. And I fought to get $10 billion of funding in the first package. It is doing exactly that. It is a safe, effective vaccine out to Montanans as soon as it's ready, ready to be shipped. Thank you, Mr. Bullock. The thing Steve Daines is most proud of is the CARES Act is giving drug companies more of our money. So maybe that's why when uh, he got him $10 billion, that they gave him $24,000 more around that same time. I mean, he even got money from drug companies that he's never gotten it from before, which is pretty dang surprising because I've never seen a corporate special interest that Steve Daines isn't going to fight for. We do have to live with it in our midst right now so we can keep our schools and our businesses open until we get to the point of a widely accepted vaccine. So I do encourage Montanans to continue to take it seriously. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Daines, uh, welcome this evening. Thank you for being here. Uh, let's continue on along this line talking about the pandemic. You mentioned the uh, billions of dollars in those first packages that went to the drug companies to help develop a vaccine or some sort of treatment. Uh, is there anything in law or, or anywhere else that guarantees that that will be made available to the public and to insurers at an affordable price. And also, I'm wondering, where are you on requiring people to wear masks to, yeah. to as you say, end this pandemic? Right. Mike, well, first of all, uh, I spent 28 years in the private sector, and like Governor Bullock, who's had a career in politics. In fact, I used to launch FDA-regulated products. So I know how you can safely get those products to market and do it faster and safely. And that's why I was able to secure these funds so we could work in parallel paths to get these critical vaccines in the hands of Montanans. The bottom line is, Mike, to answer your question, yes, they will be given to Montanans and Americans at no charge. They'll be free. That's what's been agreed to. That's why we've got to stay focused on the miracle of science and the vaccines. That's going to be the key to end the pandemic. Regarding masks, 
I think it's an issue of personal responsibility. I was out on two reservations yesterday. Believe me, I was masked up at all times, hand sanitizing, washing hands. They're taking it very seriously. Temperature checks everywhere. We need to continue to do these mitigation, uh, take these mitigation steps now to keep primarily our most vulnerable safe, and that includes, includes those in Indian country. They need help now. Uh, Mr. Jennings, just to follow up, uh, you said that these things are going to be available for free, but how is that guaranteed? Is that just a promise or is there anything written down anywhere that, that uh, guarantees that? There are. That, that has been agreed to by the Biomedical Advanced Research Development Group of the federal government. That's all part of working alongside the best scientists we have in the federal government, alongside the best scientists in the private sector. It's a vaccine that will be given voluntarily, but it'll be given for free and get it out to Montanans as safely and quickly as possible. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bullock, your rebuttal. Steve Daines takes pride in uh, working in the private sector for 28 years. He actually spent time building manufacturing factories in China at the same time that that US company was laying off American jobs. He was peddling call center software all across India, China, and Asia. And let's actually talk about the fact center, Daines. The fact is it was $10 billion that was given with no restrictions by you. They can charge whatever they want and there aren't the promises that everybody will get it for free. So we actually do need to start holding the drug companies accountable like the rest of the special interests that back you. Thank you, Mr. Dan, Mr. Dan your response. Well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's flat out false. Here's what concerns me here in Montana. We sent Governor Bullock $1.25 billion in April. He sat on those funds, has not even spent up to 50% of it yet to help Montanans. I want to ask the governor, why have you given more dollars to a Missoula condo project with your cronies there who've donated your campaign than to all the tribes in Montana combined? I just heard this firsthand when I was out on the reservations yesterday. Moving along to our next question, it goes to uh, Governor Bullock. Uh, and we're going to kind of stay on the same topic, but uh, pivot a bit to health care, Governor. Uh, one thing Democrats seem to agree on in this election is that uh, the Affordable Care Act needs to be strengthened. Uh, my question to you is what areas uh, do you think should be strengthened or changed in the ACA? How will we pay for it? And your response to charges that the Affordable Care Act is really just government controlled health care. Yeah, even before COVID-19, affordable, accessible health care was so important to so many Montanans in our economy. That's why we brought Democrats and Republicans together to actually expand Medicaid for 90,000 people. We've taken on the drug companies and the insurance companies to lower prices. But the whole time that Senator Daines is supposed to be representing us, he's been fighting to strip away health coverage for you, ending coverage for pre-existing conditions like cancer and diabetes. Look at repealing the ACA would also mean $63 million that Montanans seniors receive through Medicare prescription drug coverage and not actually taking on the pharmaceuticals. So look, I do think we need to build on what we have. And the best way to actually do that is to finally start taking on the drug companies is but one example. Start paying, not just for repeated tests, but for results. We can do more, but Steve Daines wants to strip away all that coverage from all of us. Thank you, Governor. Senator Daines. Same scare tactics from Schumer and Pelosi they're using all over the country. They've done that for several elections. I will always protect those with pre-existing conditions. I've signed on to a bill that does exactly that. The governor forgets that when Obamacare passed, premiums for Montanans doubled. 20,000 Montanans lost their health care insurance. He wants to team up with Pelosi and Schumer and have a complete government takeover health care system. That will be the biggest threat to those with pre-existing conditions. And I've lived that. I have a sister that died of a pre-existing condition. This is very personal to me. Her medical bills were over a million dollars. Thank God she had access to health care. Governor Bullock? Steve, you know that's not true. I've actually stood up to our party saying we shouldn't have a government takeover of health care. But it's so disappointing because like when the Washington Post actually gives you four Pinocchios, the most dishonest rating, that you'll protect people with pre-existing conditions like cancer and diabetes. You didn't vote once to strip that away from Montanans. You've literally voted five times now. The last time would have been about a week ago. And let's recognize that the whole time he has been there, he has been working to take away your health care. Democrats, Republicans came together in Montana. We can't let Steve Daines tear that apart. 
Okay, we're going to stick with that topic. And my first question then goes to Senator Daines, because I think this is important to talk about this thoroughly, because it's frightening to people to think that after Obamacare assured that the sickest folks could have coverage that they could actually afford, and you have disdain for that and voted against it, do you have a specific plan that you can guarantee Montanans are going to be able to afford this and their insurance isn't going to be stripped away, leaving them in a vulnerable position? Well, absolutely. I'll always protect Montana's pre-existing conditions. This is a Schumer-Pelosi scare tactic. And I've, I've signed on the PROTECT Act. That does it. But let's keep in mind, there was an eight-judge panel a little over a month ago that came together, including Judge Amy Coney Barrett, that decided unanimously that ACA case is going to go over the Supreme Court as a weak case and likely will get overturned. This is just more scare tactics coming from the left. Schumer, Pelosi, and liberal mobs are trying to destroy this woman's life and career. And destroying a woman's career is nothing new for Governor Bullock. His Lieutenant Governor Angela McLean was forced out of office, walked off the job with no explanation. Tonight, Governor Bullock, you have a chance to be honest with Montanans. I think the people of Montana deserve to know what happened to the Lieutenant Governor Angela McLean, the second woman to ever hold the Lieutenant Governor position, because according to the Helena Independent Record, she believed she was dumped for standing up for what's right. That was a headline directly from your hometown paper. What was she standing up for, Governor Bullock? Governor Bullock, 30 seconds. Steve, let's talk about honesty. Look, we don't want to know Las Vegas odds about whether that case, literally the week after the election, what you think, whether it'll overturn the ACA. We actually want a center who's going to fight to protect health care for Montanans. And all throughout this time, literally, this isn't national playbooks. This is Steve Daines, five times voting away to strip away coverage for pre-existing conditions. Montanans really deserve an independent senator that will fight for them. That's what I've done as governor, and that's what I'll do as senator. Mr. Daines. <laughs> well, again, look at the playbook. They did this back in 2010, 12, 14, 16, 18, and now 20. I don't want to see Judge Amy Coney Barrett's career destroyed next week. They're going to, the Democrats are going to try to destroy her during those hearings. I asked the governor a question. I asked about what happened to Angela McLean. Why did she mysteriously quit her job and walk off only the second woman to ever hold the position of lieutenant governor? She would be on the stage running for governor right now. A rising star in politics was pushed out by Governor Bullock. Uh, Mr. Bullock, let's talk a little bit more about the Supreme Court, as we've already been doing. Um, Mr. Daines, of course, mentioned Judge Barrett, who's up for confirmation hearing starting on Monday. I'm wondering a couple of things. Number one, uh, are you supporting or not her confirmation to the Supreme Court? And if Democrats win the Senate and she's on the court and they win the presidency, will you support any efforts to expand the court members, the number of members, i.e. court packing? Yeah, thanks for the question, Mike. Look, here's what I support. I support a U.S. Supreme Court in our overall judicial system that's beyond politics. And it's Steve Daines and Mitch McConnell that want to make it political. Four years ago, he said, absolutely not should a justice be confirmed when people are voting. Now we're 23 days away, and he's trying to ram it through, much more so than actually taking care of our small businesses and Montanans that need assistance with CARES Act. So it is unfortunate, and I think it does have more to do with that case that happens a week after that would strip away coverage for pre-existing conditions in Medicaid expansion and more. We need to figure out the ways to actually get the politics out of the court, and that's what I'm committed to doing. Like in Montana, we have a Judicial Standards Commission that actually vets judges along the way. I'll listen to Montanans, but they expect, at the end of the day, our court to be free of politics, and Steve wants to make it more political. Uh, Mr. Bullock, I don't think you answered either one of the questions I asked you. Do, do, would you like to? As far as do I support Amy Coney Barrett? First, I don't support anybody, any judge getting confirmed literally a week and a half before the election. And second of which, I do think, look, they have been trying to politicize the court every step of the way. And we have to figure out ways to make it less political. So I'm open to that, and that's anything from a Judicial Standards Commission, or we'll look at any other thing that might be suggested, including adding justices. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dane, your rebuttal. At least we finally got an answer. I support the nomination and the confirmation of Justice Amy Coney Barrett. Steve Bullock opposes it. 
Steve Bullock just said he's open to packing the courts. That's a yes. I don't think we should pack the courts. If you want to politicize the courts, for heaven's sakes, you pack them. He just said he's willing to do that. <laughs> Even Joe Biden won't answer that question right now. Steve Bullock just says he's willing to pack the courts. That should be a chilling, profound moment that has not happened for generations. It's never been packed. As Montanans, that's a threat to our Second Amendment and our very liberty and freedoms that we so cherish and want to have protected here in our great state of Montana. Thank you, Mr. Bullock. Your response? You just did pack the court, Senator Daines. Four years ago, you said, no, we should never confirm a justice when people are voting. Let the people decide. And now that's the most important thing to you. Not getting a CARES Act. They're not helping our small businesses, not helping our hospitals. You are packing the court right now. And I think it actually has more to do with the case that they're going to hear next week. And that would, or a week after the election, that'd be to strip away the protections of the Affordable Care Act, something that you've been trying to do ever since we sent you to Washington, D.C. Thank you, Governor Bullock. Senator Daines, uh, another question on the Supreme Court. You are supporting Judge Barrett for her nomination and confirmation. You say uh, she'll protect our way of life, such as our Second Amendment rights, oil pipelines, and the timber industry. What about some of those other rights, the right of privacy, the Affordable Care Act, a law that Amer many Americans depend on, voting rights, limit on campaign money? Critics say all of those will be in jeopardy if Judge Barrett is confirmed. Aren't those important rights as well for Montana and the nation? Let me just clarify something. Governor Bullock misstated what packing the court means. Let me tell you what it means. It means increasing the number of judges to 11 or 13. It doesn't mean using the established constitutional process with nine justices right now that we currently have. But he doesn't have that right. Here's the bottom line. When Justice Ginsburg tragically passed away, the front page of the Great Falls Tribune said this, Justice Ginsburg's vacancy puts the Second Amendment on center stage. I have an A-plus rating from the NRA. Steve Bullock has an F. Justice Barrett will protect Montana's Second Amendment rights. She will also ensure that she will stand up against these radical environmental groups that have shut down timber projects, shut down the Keystone Pipeline, which, by the way, the judge that shut down the Keystone Pipeline is a judge that Steve Bullock supported and put on the bench, Brian Morris. He stopped the Keystone Pipeline. Explain that to Montanans with $80 million of tax revenues coming in, $23 million of property taxes as well. This is an existential threat to the future of Montana, having these liberal judges shutting down our jobs and our natural resource industry. Thank you, Senator Nance. Governor Bullock, you have 30 seconds. Jay, you didn't answer your question. Yeah, the Affordable Care Act is in jeopardy. The corrupting influence of money in this system, where Steve Daines has taken over $2 million of corporate PAC money, is actually at risk. At the end of the day, and even as he talks about these liberal judges, judges shouldn't be liberal or conservative. Judges should leave their politics at the door in the courthouse. And all Senator Daines is concerned about is trying to get more judges on that will take away our health care. Montanans expect much, much more than Senator Daines. Senator Daines, your response? Yeah, we already talked about the issue that uh, it's not going to get overturned, they say, by the Supreme Court. But, but the bottom line is this. One of the most important decisions and votes you cast as a United States senator is for the court. They protect our liberty. They protect the Second Amendment. They, it's critically important you don't have these activist judges. And that's why I will stand up and continue to fight for a Montana way of life to ensure we have judges that aren't overreaching, shutting down timber projects, shutting down pipelines, not allowing us to move forward with uh, introducing um, in terms of the Endangered Species Act relates to delisting the grizzly bear. There's so many issues at stake that go right back to the way the judges rule. Thank you, Mr. Daines. This next question, Mr. Bullock, and it does dovetail into the Second Amendment. Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden has a long list of gun control actions that he supports. You can read them on his website, which would include a ban on assault rifle sales, high capacity magazines, <laughs> and banning online sales of ammunition and firearms. Are there any of his proposals, if he is elected, that you would actually oppose if you were elected to the U.S. Senate? Yeah, Jill, I mean, Montanans know I'm a gun owner and a hunter, and one of my happiest days was my, when my son got his first buck. They also know that I've stood up for our Second Amendment rights. When Steve Daines was pitching software, I think somewhere in Asia, I actually led the state's efforts to make the Second Amendment recognized as an individual right. We've expanded our gun rights and our Second Amendment rights while I was governor. 
But I do think we ought to be able to have a conversation along the way about things that we could do to actually keep people more safe. I've never met a gun owner that doesn't want to keep their community and their family safe. And 80% of Montanans think is an example that we should have universal background checks. The same way that I bought my guns, that violent history check. I think we should be able to have that discussion about moving forward doing so. And there are other steps, common sense while protecting, and I'll always stand up to our party when it comes to protecting the rights, but we ought to at least be able to have a conversation. Thank you. Mr. Danes, 30 seconds. Well, that was the Steve Bullock back in 2009. Let's talk about the Steve Bullock in 2019 when he ran for president. He stood on the stage with Elizabeth Warren, with Bernie Sanders, and he moved way to the left. He got to see the real Steve Bullock when he ran for president. In fact, he went on CNN with Jake Tapper, and he said, yeah, I support a ban on semi-automatic guns. What part of the Second Amendment and shall not infringe does Steve Bullock not understand? I have an A from the Montana Shooting Sports Association. He has an F. I have an A plus in the NRA. He has an F. Let these objective outside groups decide who's best on the Second Amendment. It's not even close between Governor Bullock and myself. Governor Bullock. Steve, uh, my dream shotgun is a Benelli, a semi-automatic. Uh, I'm just not wealthy enough to get one. Um, and look, no, I wouldn't ban semi-automatic weapons. I think we ought to be able to have a discussion you know, assault weapons, assault rifles, sticks in Walmart, others don't even sell them. They're not used for self-defense. They're not used for hunting. We should have that conversation about not selling them any further as well. But all, and I think actually, to be honest, that grade came more about the fact that I stand with Montana and saying we ought to be able to have violent history background checks than anything else. I'll always stand up for our Second Amendment rights, and that's for our against my party when need be. And I'll always stand with Montanans. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Mr. D Mr. Danes, uh, let's talk about voting. Now, your party and the president sued undue mail voting in Montana during a pandemic, and also your party is schemed to get the Green Party on the ballot. Uh, are, are you supportive of these efforts? Uh, why or why not? Yeah, well, first of all, I support the all mail-in uh, ballots. Yeah, we saw that on the June primary. In fact, in June 2nd, we had a primary. I received more votes than anybody on a primary ballot in the history of Montana. The question is, why? Why have we seen such a huge interest in this election? And why we need to have all mail-ins? Well, partly because of the pandemic going on. We need to make sure every Montana has a chance to vote. But here's what's at stake. If Steve Bullock is elected to the United States Senate, it's most likely Chuck Schumer's the majority leader. There will be absolutely no way to stop Nancy Pelosi and the liberal tyranny in Washington, D.C. It's a frightening thought. There's so much at stake. This is about the Second Amendment. This is about our livelihoods with the carbon tax, which Steve Bullock supports, that would threaten 35,000 Montana jobs. This is about shutting down the Keystone Pipeline versus keeping it going forward. This is about packing the courts. I don't think Steve Bullock knows what packing the courts means. That means adding 11 or 13 justices on the bench instead of the current nine. So there's so much at stake. The American people want to see somebody's going to stand with law enforcement versus defunding the police and supporting the liberal mob. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bullock, I'm sure you'd like to respond to that. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure he answered the question. Look, he stayed silent as the Republican National Committee tried to take away the ability for folks to actually vote safely. He stayed quiet when they tried to dismantle the Postal Service. Stays quiet time and time again. And Senator, you know that I'll stand up to anyone if it jeopardizes the Montana way of life. Unlike you, it's 95% of the time with, you've been with Mitch McConnell. Montanans want a leader, not a lapdog, and that's what they've gotten out of you. Mr. Deans, 30 seconds to respond. Well, uh, some more uh, a bull from Steve Bullock there. Uh, regarding the United States Postal Service, I called to joy. I was the lead Republican to get additional services and funding for the United States Postal Service and the COVID packages. So he's got that false, but I tell you what, I talk about lap dogs. Just remember who recruited Steve Bullock into this race. This guy named Chuck Schumer flew into Montana, got Bullock in the race. Uh, Steve Bullock is getting money from these liberal groups. It's Schumer. Schumer's flooding the airwaves right now. Talk about a lap dog. I can't keep up with Bullock. There's a lot of money in this campaign, but I'm getting outspent by Steve Bullock. And guess who's doing that? Chuck Schumer. If you want to talk about a lap dog, that's the governor of Montana with Chuck Schumer. Thank you, Senator Daines. Governor Bullock, our next question uh, about climate change. The energy secretary was in Montana last week visiting Coal Strip, 
talking about carbon capture technology, but really at no time was climate change really discussed. What climate change initiatives will you support uh, as Senator? And do you think carbon capture technology is the saving grace of the coal strip power plants that are currently listed third largest polluter of CO2 in the nation? Yeah, I do think that carbon capture is part of the overall discussion. That's why I've actually led a group of 17 states, Democrats and Republicans, to look into this along the way. Look, Montanans know that we have to address climate change. Our fire seasons are longer. Our planting seasons are longer. That's why we have actually both doubled the wind, quadrupled our solar. And we're still one of the nation's top coal producers along the way. This can be a bipartisan issue. And Democrats and Republicans need to come together. And unfortunately, that Senator Daines has had his head in his sand and hands in the pockets of the corporate donors all the way along, not even acknowledging the climate changes impacted by human beings. I think that has more to do with a million dollars that he's gotten from the oil and gas industry than reflecting the needs of Montanans. So now I don't like, I don't believe, and I've been strong on not on carbon tax, but we can look at this as actually an opportunity, an opportunity to create good jobs, invest in our communities, and not leave communities behind. Senator Daines, 30 second rebuttal, please. Look, I've got a degree in chemical engineering from Montana State University. I do believe there's a human component to climate change. But what Governor Bullock wants to do is he supports a carbon tax. That's a direct threat to 35,000 Montana jobs and families. He also supports getting back into that Paris climate, climate Accord, which by the way, that puts burdens on the United States and lets China off the hook. We've got to hold China accountable and that's not the way to do it. Remember, we've seen CO2 reductions related to energy down 12% over the last 10 years, while China's gone up 24%. Steve Bullock is too liberal in his positions. It's a threat to so many hardworking Montana. Thank you, Senator. Governor Bullock, you've had the final 30 seconds. Yeah, you know, I mean, Senator Daines knows it's just flat out false that I support a carbon tax. He knows that when he was pitching software in China, I was the first time to stand up and actually say we should have the Keystone XL go forward. And I supported that as well. And I think why he tries to bring all these national issues in is because he doesn't want to run on his own record. He's actually been spending more time trying to make me into something that I'm not. At the end of the day, when you're captured by corporations and special interests and really don't have much results to show for Montana, that's what you get. I'll fight for all Montanans. All right. Thank you, Governor. Next question goes to Senator Daines. Tribal nations are demanding justice when it comes to missing and murdered indigenous women and men, and you are on the Committee for Indian Affairs. What specifically have you done to help our tribal nations on this issue? Yeah, it's a big issue. When you, when you look at what's going on right now, with the murder rate of, uh, of Native American women. It's 10 times that of the, uh, of the national average. And that's why I work closely with the tribes. I've got the Hannah's Act. In fact, I, I marched on the Northern Cheyenne uh, Reservation with, uh, with her family, with who she tragically was murdered. Yet one more tragic example of what happens to women in, uh, in Native American country. And so I absolutely have been working with the tribes to ensure with, we come with law enforcement. That's another big issue right now, is law enforcement. They don't have enough boots on the ground in law enforcement. They're caught up in these horrible bureaucracies. And that's why I've been working with the Crow tribe and Northern Cheyenne. Just yesterday, we we're talking this very issue and they thanked me. They thanked me for the work I'm doing on behalf of one of the most vulnerable parts of our population, which are our Native Americans. And that's why you're seeing great support for my campaign in Indian country and not so much support for Governor Bullock. But to follow up on that, have you been able to enhance the law enforcement presence on the reservations? Because yeah. that seems to be a criticism right. no. that goes unchecked. Yeah. Happy to answer. It'll get in the weeds here a little bit. It's called a 638 provision with the Crow Tribe. We work with them. I'm pleased to report now, they have literally now virtually filled up all the open positions uh, for the Crow Tribe. I had the same conversation yesterday with the Northern Cheyenne. They need to keep putting forward on their 638 provisions. That is the path to get these positions filled. The problem they have right now is these members of law enforcement that want to work there get caught up in these background checks. That's how we solve it, and we're working on that. And I can tell you, if you talk, reach out to Northern Cheyenne and the Crow, you'd hear it firsthand the good work we're doing there to help them make their reservation safer. All right, Mr. Bullock. You know, we have actually brought Democrats and Republicans together in Montana 
to address the epidemic of missing and murdered Indigenous women, passing about five different bills. And we do need to do more. But it's interesting because I've had those same conversations as well. The Northern Cheyenne was saying, like, why are there only four Bureau of Indian Affairs officers for the entire reservation? I've heard that from other reservations. Senator Daines has been actually back there on that committee for the last six years, and he hasn't increased those opportunities for our tribes. So I'll always stand and work with Indian country in both promoting the safety and in government to government relationships. All right, Mr. Daines. Yeah, well, just had the conversation yesterday with the president Pena of the Northern Cheyenne tribe. I was there in the Lane Deer. I was there in the, on the Crow tribe there uh, in, uh, in Crow agency as well. And uh, what they were very excited about is we're finally starting to see the results of working with the tribe, ensuring that they can continue to have their principles of self-determination and sovereignty as they are now getting these positions filled. That is a wonderful thing to see here, critical for us to protect one of the most vulnerable parts of our population. And these are these missing and murdered indigenous women. And uh, I'm pleased to report we're finally starting to make some progress there. The right. tribes, uh, it, it was a really productive meeting yesterday. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bullock, uh, Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden has proposed increasing income taxes on those earning over $400,000 a year to help uh, reduce our federal deficit. Do you support that? Yeah, I think first we should be looking at some of the things that like we've done here with an apprenticeship tax credit. But the idea that those that are wealthy should pay a little bit more makes a heck of a lot of sense to me. I mean, one of Senator Daines' proudest accomplishments is getting through those two, 2017 tax cuts. Cuts that his party leader said, literally, we have to get through to make our donors happy. And you know what? Amazon, Chevron, 60 Fortune 500 companies paid zero in taxes. Well, Montanans only got scraps and $2 trillion of debt along the way that our kids and grandkids should are going to have to pay. I'll never vote for something that actually makes it so that my kid's teacher pays more in taxes than the largest corporations. But Senator Daines, every step of the way, has been saying, how can we provide these benefits for the corporations, not working Montanans? And I think working Montanans expect a heck of a lot better. Thank you. Senator Daines, your rebuttal. Well, perhaps I have a little different view on what scraps are. Maybe to the governor, $1,200 a year are scraps. Ask a Montana family if that's the case. Studies show the average Montana family saw $1,200 a year of tax relief as it relates to that tax bill that we passed back in 2017. I want to cut taxes. Steve Bullock just said it. He wants to raise taxes. Poverty rates came down to their lowest levels in 50 years. The unemployment rate was at the lowest level in 50 years. Wages were rising at the highest level in our nation's history prior to the COVID pandemic. Why? Because we cut taxes. Bullock wants to raise taxes. I want to cut taxes. Thank you. Governor Bullock, 30 seconds. Maybe Montanans did get $1,200, but you know what? Even the provision that Steve Daines insisted on had, that had to be slid in there, he got $37 thousand dollars for a trillion dollars of stock buybacks it didn't create jobs here he, it's not helping most montana so what i want to do is actually have guys like steve Daines pay, pay his fair share corporations pay their fair share i'll be watching out for main street and small business montana steve Daines has been watching out for the wealthiest among us Thank you, Governor. Senator Daines, you have the next question. We're going to stick with this topic about wealth inequality. Over the last three decades, the United States has witnessed a huge shift of wealth from the working ranks of our country to the top 1%. Part of the reason for that continuing is the 2017 tax cut bill that you supported, a bill that helped push the tax rate on the 400 wealthiest households below the rates of almost everyone else. Is that a trend that needs to be reversed? If, if not, why not? And if so, what will you do about it? Well, this comes down to a fundamental question here. As I had to keep jobs growing here in the United States, we've cut taxes, job growth is occurring, the COVID, COVID pandemic hit and it slowed this economy down. The bottom line is this, we saw the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years prior to COVID. We saw the highest increase in median wages for hardworking Americans and Montanans in 30 years. We saw the, high, the lowest levels of unemployment for 
African Americans, Asian Americans, for women. Why? Because we cut taxes. Keep in mind, when we had that debate about tax cuts, I stepped in, I said, we need to lower taxes for Main Street Montana businesses. That's called the pass-through, that's called S-course. Montana businesses cheered, cheered. That's why they're supporting me in this race, the small businesses. 95% of our jobs in Montana on the private sector come from businesses with 20 employees or less. Why do you think they're supporting my candidacy? Because that allows them to grow their jobs, hire more people, pay higher wages. Governor Bullock, your response. So I think he did say that a tax law that gives the overwhelming benefit to the wealthiest in this nation like him and the largest corporations are something that he wants to push. Now, let's be honest, Senator, you've created more jobs in China than you have in Montana or the U.S., not only building those manufacturing factories, but then continuing to protect the tax breaks for companies that ship their jobs overseas. We need to make sure that actually folks do pay their fair share. Folks like Steve Daines and folks like 60 Fortune 500 companies that paid zero in taxes under that tax cut. Well, we got $2 trillion more of debt Thank you, than our Governor. kids and grandkids like Thank to you. pay. Senator Daines, your 30-second response. Yeah, well, he's just parroting the uh, Chuck Schumer attack ads that Montans are sick and tired of seeing. Just for what it's worth, that was completely debunked by USA Today. Uh, so that, that's the facts on that hit, by the way. But uh, here's the bottom line. What you just heard Governor Bullock say is he wants to raise taxes. Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, and Chuck Schumer have already relayed the message. They're ready for the largest tax increase in American history. Send Steve Bullock back to Washington, D.C., and that is what you're going to get. All right, next question goes to Governor Bullock. It's becoming increasingly difficult and expensive for families to afford childcare. And that is part of what has contributed to women leaving the workforce at eight times the higher rate that men are doing in this pandemic. Is there anything government should do to make childcare more affordable and available? Because it does have huge economic implications in Montana and across the country. No, and it really does. And one of the things that we've done with CARES Act dollars is actually provide a child care grant so people can stay in the workforce. One of the things that I've pushed for my whole time as governor is a voluntary public pre-K, not only for the workforce needs, but we know that 90% of a child's brains develop before they even enter into kindergarten along the way. So I do think there should be more federal funding for that. Look, nobody should have to be choosing. One of the ways also that we, if we increase wages, childcare will become much easier, both for the workers and the folks actually in the workforce. And that's one of those things that, Senator Daines, that's what you miss. Half of Americans haven't had a pay increase in real terms in 40 years. Well, the wealthiest have gotten that much more wealthy. That's why we do need tax policies that actually make guys like you pay your fair share and make sure that corporations are paying their fair share so that working families actually have more in their pockets so that they can afford child care. Senator Daines. Yeah, so as part of the care package, we, we passed a family home leave back there that would help particularly working moms as they had to deal with the issue of, of children being home uh, to attend virtual learning in the schools. So I, I support that and stood strongly for that. But he, he mentioned the, the dollars we sent back to Montana. We sent Governor Bullock $1.25 billion. I fought for that, for the governor of Montana to be distributed to Montanans. To date, he hasn't even given out half of it, half of it. We could help Montanans in the middle of this pandemic by moving those dollars out that I sent back to him back in April. Governor Bullock? Family paid leave, uh, enhanced unemployment benefits, money for our tribes, money for our hospitals. Steve Daines actually tried to get the CARES Act through without any of that in. It's only when people stood up and said, look, you're missing a whole lot of folks along the way that you actually had to capitulate and take care of those groups. And like 97% of those CARES Act dollars are committed. Our schools wouldn't be open if we were waiting for Washington DC to open. There, I wouldn't have been able to provide benefits for 43,000 Montana businesses when it comes to, to uninsurance taxes along the way. So we have been actually utilizing that money while we've been waiting for Washington, D.C. to get its stuff together. Thank you. Senator Daines, um, 
your campaign, and I think you refer to yourself as a fifth generation Montanan. Of course, um, you were born in California, and uh, were your parents even born here in Montana? Is it accurate to call yourself a fifth generation Montanan? Well, I'm grateful with my great great grandma that homesteaded 23 miles east of Conrad. In fact, uh, she's buried there on her tombstone. It says Saved by Grace. She's buried there next to my great grandma and my great grandpa. Uh, my grandpa was born there in Conrad. And uh, I was nearly born in Montana. Here's what happened. My dad was going to school at the University of Montana. My mom was seven months pregnant, putting my dad through school, a United States Marine. He couldn't find a job in Montana. That's why I had to go to California. They didn't like it very well and moved right back to Bozeman when I was a year old. So that, that sets the record straight. But the reason was because they couldn't find good high paying jobs. Under Governor Bullock's watch, the average wages here in Montana, we rank 44th in the nation, 44th. So the governor talks about wages and need for higher wages. I've actually done it. We created hundreds of jobs right here in Montana at twice, twice the state average. I'm very proud of that, that we created all these jobs in Montana. I've actually done it, and we're seeing a blossoming high tech, higher wage sector now across Montana. Governor Bullock hasn't created one single job in his life. He's been a career politician. It's a big difference in our backgrounds. Governor Bullock, you're about to served the same amount of time, uh, Senator Daines. And when it comes to the private sector, you were, were creating jobs, but those jobs were in China and throughout Asia. Look, before the pandemic, Montana, if you look over the last eight, 10 years, we were actually among the nation's leaders in income growth and household growth. And that's by focusing on our small businesses, getting them what they need, apprenticeships along the way. Even that company that you claim wasn't that great for Montana, you created more jobs in that company overseas than here. I'll always fight for Montana and not for the tax breaks where corporations are shipping their jobs overseas. Mr. Daines, 30 seconds to respond. Well, the governor put the bull back in Bullock there again. <laughs> that was a hit they used back when I ran back uh, in a prior election. And the Montana Democrat Party had to publicly apologize on the front pages of Montana newspapers, debunking what Steve Bullock just said. The fact he's discrediting a great Montana company. We've got these great high paying jobs there, 500 in Montana. And Steve Bullock's throwing this company under the bus. That is just, that's offensive to so many of us who fought to create these jobs that were twice the state average. I'm very, very proud of that. I've done it in the private sector. Steve Bullock has never had a private Thank sector you, job in life. Governor Bullock, your opponents are running ads uh, noting in this campaign that you let one of your chief lieutenants go after he was accused of harassing women, but then failed to inform his next employer of that fact. In fact, then he went on to engage in more harassment. Doesn't this reflect poor judgment on your part? And is this something that Montana voters should consider? Yeah, Jay, first look, from 91 to 97, Steve Daines was building manufacturing factories in China. From 2007 to 2012, he was actually the head of Asian sales, selling call center software all across Asia. So it is true that you've been creating jobs there and not here. And look, when it comes to my former aide, uh, Kevin O'Brien, when I heard what he had done at a subsequent employer, I said he should immediately be fired. That kind of behavior is never acceptable. And like the leader of any large organization, I do what I can to make sure that I build an organization that reflects the values of us, Montana values. And when somebody stand, falls short, I take action because it's what we do that shows who we are. And in the Senate, I will be a leader in making sure that people are protected when it comes from, to sexual harassment and also equal pay for equal work. Senator Daines. Listen, Governor Bullock has had a consistent, hostile, repeated pattern of hostility towards women in the workplace. Governor Bullock's former top aide just talked about it, Kevin O'Brien, this was his campaign manager, his deputy chief of staff, sexually harassed women under the governor's watch. And according to New York Times, not only did Governor Bullock cover it up, but he got him a new job with a position of power with the mayor of New York City, Blasio, no. where he victimized women again because Governor Bullock chose not to warn his new employer. I'm the father of two daughters. That is not how you treat women. Governor Bullock, your response. Steve, you know, I didn't even know initially where he got another job along the way. And for a guy who literally has voted 
to repeal protections for hundreds of thousands of women in the workplace when it comes to harassment. And for a guy who continues just to be mom when his party leader actually says, well, we'll grab women by art, can't say that on uh, regular television, or continued sexual harassment claims are brought up, and you don't say a word along the way. We all expect, and we should actually be doing everything we can to protect women, both in the workplace and all throughout our community. Can, can, I, can I correct the record on that, if I might? When Steve Bullock was asked why he didn't tell de Blasio, the answer was, I didn't think he'd do it again. That is not how you treat women. That is a public record, Governor. Steve, the actual record is, I didn't know where he went to work. Subsequently, I did find out, and look, I was disappointed, like everyone should, both that he did something again, and that, look, when he went there, that I didn't know. But from that, never, perspective, never asked, from that perspective, you never answer look, the question. we all can do better, can't we, Steve? Thank you. Thank you. You never answer the question. You're McClain, either. You're fortunate. Who's on to the next question, please? Montana. Well, Jill Valley. Okay, thank you. Question. All right, next question goes to Mr. Danes. You've seen these the campaign ads that say you voted against funding in the Southwest Montana Veterans Home in 2018, but you were there for the groundbreaking ceremony, taking credit. Is that hypocritical? Can you explain how that came to be? Not at all. I was proud to fight for that, the funding for that home in Butte. I'm on the Appropriations Committee. We got it passed through Appropriations. We got on the floor of the Senate. Here's the problem is that when Nancy Pelosi jams some of these great big spending bills with a bunch of pork, you either have a chance to vote yes or you vote no. I was rejecting all the additional pork in there to protect Montana taxpayers, fully supporting the veterans home. It is so misconstrued. My record on veterans is solid. I'm the son of a US Marine. I got the Blue Water Navy veteran bill passed, working with Christian Gillibrand, a Democrat from New York, replaced Hillary Clinton in the Senate. She worked with me, I worked with her to get that passed to protect our Vietnam veterans who were exposed to Agent Orange when they're Navy. When I think about what Governor Bullock has done, one of his, uh, his primary supporters was Jane Fonda. Now, if you want to upset Vietnam veterans, just let them know that Jane Fonda is one of his biggest fans, who, by the way, just this week said that COVID-19 was a gift from God from the left. Okay, Governor Bullock, your response to that. If you know that Jane Fonda hasn't given me a nickel in this campaign, maybe bring that up because you're trying to cover up for the $50,000 you took for the Wilkes brothers that want to actually take away access to public lands, or the $80,000 that you took from the DeVos family, or the $800,000 that you've taken from out-of-state real estate interest, or the $700,000 that you've taken from prescription drug companies and insurance companies. And they have actually gotten their worth out of you. But look, at the end of the day, Senator Danes, voted against that funding for the veterans home. We worked so hard at the state level to get and then came home to take credit for it. Right, Montanans expect better. Senator Deans? Uh, it's just misrepresentation of the facts. Um, let's talk about special interests. Well, let's also talk about self-interest with Governor Bullock. Montanans deserve to know the truth. The state of Montana awarded $14 million in state contracts to your brother's company since you've been in office. You've said your brother left the company, but he's still chairman of the board. Let's set the record straight. My question to you is, do you or do you not receive a monthly check from your brother's company, Governor Bullock? Let's, uh, hey, do I have the opportunity to answer that? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So, Very shortly. So, so my brother started a company in his basement uh, in 1992. Got his first state contract 20 years before I became governor. Stepped down as CEO eight years before I became governor. Four years before I became governor, he was out of any financial interest. And I've never awarded one contract through my whole time in state government. You go after my brother, what's next? My mom, Steve? Well, All right. your, brother's chair, your brother's the chairman of the board. Look on the Secretary of State's website. He's chairman of the board. Thank you, Senator. Go to, go to bothwaysbullock.com. You'll see the story right there. Thank you. It's time now to move to our closing statements. Each candidate has uh, a minute 30 to summarize their uh, final pitch for voters. Again, a drawing to determine the Governor Bullock. You go first on this. I want to thank MTN and so many Montanans uh, for watching. Look, whether he was attending Helena Public Schools or wandering our public lands, Montana has given me, my wife, Lisa, and our kids more than I could ever give back. 
And that's why as governor, I've worked to protect that Montana for today and for future generations, bringing Democrats and Republicans together. We expanded access to care. We've kept our public lands in public hands. We've invested in education. We've actually helped our small businesses and workers. And those are Democratic issues or Republican issues. Those are actually Montana values. Yet while we've been working together to secure a better Montana, Steve Daines has proven he can't be trusted to do what's right for our state. He spent this entire campaign and this debate actually distorting the facts about his own record and lying about mine. Because he's more interested in saving his job in health care than he is about protecting yours. So when he tells you that he cares about our economy, don't forget that he actually created manufacturing factories in China, then went to DC to protect tax breaks for those corporations that ship our jobs overseas. When he tells you he'll look out for our seniors, don't forget about the fact that he made trillions of tax cuts while risking Medicare and Social Security. And when he tells you that he'll protect your health care, remember time and time again he's voted to strip away coverage for pre-existing conditions. Let me make this simple. I'll always do what's right for Montana. That's what I've done, and that's what I'll always do. So thanks so much for listening in today, and I'd sure appreciate your vote. Thank you, Governor. Senator Daines, you have the final 90 seconds. Thanks, Jay. It was five generations ago that my great-great-grandma came to Montana and settled 23 miles east of Conrad, and she left a legacy of faith, of family, of freedom. And those are the same values that Cindy and I have passed on to our four children that we've been able to raise here in Montana. I went to Montana State University and I got a degree in chemical engineering. And I spent my career building businesses and creating jobs. In fact, hundreds of great high paying jobs right here in Montana. Steve Bullock has been a career politician. And that's only one of the many clear differences between Governor Bullock and myself. Montanans want to protect the second amendment. I have an A plus from the NRA, Steve Bullock has an F. Montanans want lower taxes, higher wages. Steve Bullock has raised taxes as governor and if elected, he'll raise them in DC. Montanans wanna move forward with the Keystone Pipeline. Steve Bullock has come out opposed to it. Montanans want their voice heard in the Supreme Court with Amy Coney Barrett as the next Supreme Court justice. You heard it here today, Steve Bullock is opposed to her. Montanans stand with President Trump to protect our way of life here in Montana. Steve Bullock, a year ago, stood up and said he wanted to see President Trump impeached and removed from office. Montanans want a senator who's pro-life. Steve Bullock has the most radical positions on abortion of any governor in America. So I'm grateful to have served Montana in the United States Senate for the past six years. It's been the honor of my life, and I humbly ask for your vote. Well, that concludes today's debate for the U.S. Senate here on the Montana Television Network. We'd like to thank uh, Governor Bullock and Senator Daines for a spirited debate today. Good luck to both of you as the campaign winds down. Our MTN debate team is not quite done yet. We invite you to join us in just five minutes at 7.05 tonight for Facebook Live. We'll be uh, joined by political science professors Rod, uh, Rob Saldine from the University of Montana and Jeremy Johnson from Carroll College as we break down Tonight's debate, again, that starts at 7.05 on the MTN Facebook pages across the state. And finally, one last pitch for everyone to get out and exercise your right to vote. For Jill Valley, Mike Dennison, and our crew behind the scenes, our director, James Rafferty, and producer, Eric Yockham, I'm Jay Cohn here in Billings. Thank you so much for all of us at the Montana Television Network, and have a great night. Stay with MTN News through Election Day and beyond for in-depth coverage of the 2020 vote from Montana's news leader.